Hey everyone, it's Livewire, or if you know me from Instagram, Squiggly McPickens. In this video, I'm going to go over different ways to bind your fibers and split your fibers into bundles. Are you time tripping again? I can always tell you now when you've been time tripping. Fiber binding actually contains many different variations, and each has a unique look and movement. In this video, I'll walk you through splitting, teasing, weaving, and braiding. Braiding has been used to refer to the broader use of fiber binding, but actually only describes one specific type of binding. There's a few reasons why you might want to bind your fibers together. From limiting stress on individual fibers, from grabs and catches, to changing the look of the whip. When your fibers are loose, there's more potential for you to grab a hold of an individual fiber or two, and too much stress on individual fibers can cause breakage. Gathering up fibers and having them tucked in from a binding method will allow you to avoid accidentally grabbing only a couple fibers. As I show you some methods for binding, I'm also going to demonstrate the different aesthetics that come with the different binding methods. Sectioning your fiber bundle off into different groupings can be achieved by binding your fibers together. When I refer to splitting, I'll be speaking about the initial split that we're doing now and also splitting those bundles apart during your whip play. Splitting your whip into two or three pieces and having those sections stay apart during your whip session can greatly be assisted by having a bind. You can split your fibers into as many bundles as you like. Though the fewer fibers to a bundle, the fewer fibers there are to tangle and intertwine securing the bind. This is especially so in the case that you tease or weave smaller fiber bundles. If they don't seem to be holding together via either of those methods, your best bet is to try the braiding method and finish with some clear tape. I'll be outlining that further into the tutorial. Clear tape is ideal for finishing binds as it doesn't leave behind sticky residue, is clear to allow the light through, and is easy to take off. Should heat cause some tackiness to stick to the fiber surface, Simply wipe with rubbing alcohol, then rinse. To remove tape, take scissors and slice along it. Roll it open and peel it off. Fiber heads around 80 to 120 fibers are best suited to be split into two pieces. Again, if you split it further, you might need to have a tighter bind type by applying the braiding method. Fiber heads with higher fiber counts, say 150 to upwards of 400, are well suited to be split into three pieces or more. The first method I'm going to show you is what I've been teaching for a long time. It's my primary method and one I've been using since I started. The reason I came upon it was because I was using a three foot, three section whip. Using this whip style, I realized I needed to find a way that was quick and easy to keep my fiber bundle separated during light whipping sessions. I've been sharing this with other split head whip users since. Teasing my fibers into their respective bundles was the fastest and most efficient way to keep them apart from each other and assist with the aesthetic of a three-piece split. First step is combing out your whip. Work your way from tail to handle, gently pulling the fibers apart. Should you come upon a snag, don't force it, just work your way back up. Next, you're gonna separate your fibers or split them so you can continue to tease them. Gently separate them into their fiber groups. If they're not pre-split, just section them off into bundles that are relatively the same in size. Or again, if you're looking for a very specific look, section them off with those respective amounts. Finally, with a sweeping circular motion, take your arm and wrap the fibers around in the direction that they naturally go. Swirl your arm around and assist them into tangling together and wrapping around each other. The more that you assist them with intertwining, the tighter the bind will be. Here's an example of a three-piece split that's been teased and then used. While in use, the bind will become a little bit tighter as they intertwine further. Now when you're light whipping, you can split your sections apart or bring them together in one group. If they start to intertwine at all, just put your fingers between them and separate them periodically. The next method I'm going to show you is called weaving. This is an extension from this first method and I recommend you gently tease your fibers whether it be one bundle, two, or three, before moving on to weaving. Weaving is a method where you further tuck in loose fibers. 
Once you take a sweep with your arm and tease your fibers, you might have fiber tips that are still sticking out of their respective bundles. To weave, take stray fibers or ones you pull out of the main bundle to secure the bind. You're going to be twisting those fibers around, pulling them through the main bundle to resemble a spiral staircase shape. It's best to do this while seated. First take a fiber or even two at a time should they be the same length. Cross it over to the other side on an angle. Every couple of inches or so, you'll push the fiber through the center of the bundle and then cross it back over, feed it through, and repeat this process. It doesn't take many fibers before the bind gets tight. Ensure you're working on an angle and not pulling the fibers straight across. Also, always have your other hand to guide the fiber to ensure it does not kink or break. Weave your fibers halfway, three quarters, or maybe even just the very beginning. The majority of the light is coming out of the fiber tips at the cut ends. Should you leave the tail free flowing and only weave part of your whip, then you'll have a flurry of bright lights at the end. Play with different effects. Weaving your fibers is particularly good when doing fiber grip moves, where you'll be directly gripping your fiber bundle or bundles. Having a clean fiber bundle clear of any strays can be helpful because ordinarily the brightest light is coming out of the tip. Tucking the fibers into the main bundle will illuminate the bundle more, but you will lose some of the bright fiber tip light that would have otherwise interspersed down the length of the free flowing whip. Because these are end glow fiber optics, the brightest of the light is coming out of the fiber tip. When they are tucked into the main bundle, the light is distributed differently and diffused somewhat throughout. Related to this, you might want to consider weaving your fibers for about two-thirds the length of your whip and leaving some free-flowing at the end. You're less likely to grip these fibers and accidentally pull them out, and they'll provide some more light distribution when whipping. The final method I'm going to show you is braiding. Section off your whip into three pieces. You can gently tease them so that they stay apart. Now just as you would hair, cross those pieces over one another into a braid. Just work with the natural wave of the fibers. Never pull 90 degrees across. To finish off your braid, simply take a piece of clear tape and wrap it around that point. You could either braid part of your whip or all the way till the end. It's up to you. To take apart your braid, Slice along the clear tape, pull it off, and do as you did before when you were untangling your fibers. Just work your way from tail to handle. This fiber binding style is fantastic for a bull whip or whip cracking aesthetic. The tight bundle which tapers off at the end has a similar look and movement to this style of whip. It's important to note that because your fibers are much tighter together, the fiber bundle will both move at a higher speed and have more of an impact when it hits you. The fiber tips at the end are tightly bound together and can cause injury should they come across your skin at high speed. So just be careful when you're using your whip bound in this manner and be aware that fibers will behave differently. Again, as I mentioned, you can change the look of your bind by braiding halfway, three quarters, or fully. Have fun and test binds out. You can secure it using clear tape and get creative. It's important to note that your fibers have some memory to them and that when they are in a position for some time, they will start to take on the shape. This is particularly true for fiber braiding, being more uniform and tighter bind. When you undo a bind, you might find that the fibers have been crimped or have a wave to them. This is the main reason to forego braiding tightly and pulling straight across. Be sure to braid loosely and towards you for a wave that will return to normal quickly. Don't be alarmed, the shape will go away in a few days. Just leave it hanging or lay it flat and they will start to straighten. Always avoid storing your whip where it could encounter extreme temperatures hazards such as pets or being bent, and stress being on the fibers. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the electric jungle.